Alright, Randy Prizzle's uh, monologue. I'm back again for the new year. Happy New Year to all of you. I uh, know some of you obviously had a good Christmas and stuff. Yes, obviously now I'm walking towards Battersea Power Station. Basically the train station and I have a little thing that kind of gripes me about the station and um, basically uh, it's zone, not basically the station, the station's beautiful. If you've gone to the station, you would see it's, you know, a work of art, it's just, you know, looks very good, high-tech stuff and all that. But the problem I have with it is that this area is zone one. They've made the station zone one and this is a zone two area. I personally don't understand that. I, I find that absolutely baffling. That just ahead, you've got Battersea Park Station, which is a zone two. That's about five minutes walk from here. And then this one, if I can flip the camera around, the power station, which we're gonna to come to very soon, is a zone one. Now you've got Vauxhall ahead. Vauxhall's about a zone two, I guess. Yeah, Vauxhall zone two. Vauxhall's about another 10 minutes walk from there. Just over there to the side, you know, uh, Nine Elm Station, they've made that zone one as well. Here, there's the station. Get a good look at that. It's a Battersea Pass station right up there. That's obviously the station. I can't really flip the camera around because I don't really know how to do that when you're checking. You know, see, it's all high tech. Buildings in there look nice and all that. But the problem is this is like zone one. Why is that a zone one area? Why is this underground zone one when this is clearly a zone two area? Battersea's always been zone two. I don't understand why it is zone one. What makes it zone one? It's just more money in the fat captures pockets, you know what I mean? To take away from the consumers and all of that. But you know, there's Battersea Power Station, the looks of it, you know. They're redoing really all of that and you know, it looks nice and all that. But that's the thing that kind of grates me about this whole thing. And then to get that train, obviously I've not been on the train tear, but to get a train to go to like, a different area in the Northern Line, because it's on Northern Line. It's, it's 10 minutes or something like that wait. Even on peak times or something, it's like, it's like 10 minutes wait. You'll wait 10 minutes for a train under, under underground. That's madness. Since when is that happening? I know, listen, in places like Amersham, which I used to go to before, you'll probably wait about five, seven minutes for a train. That's absolutely ridiculous. And I just see it as like, it's just what it is, isn't it? Just the whole thing of more money in pockets, pushing more people out so you can make more of a profit in that towards the people's pockets. But what does it do for the people who live there in Battersea? Not good. You know, you've got all the rich come in and they build all these high rise stuff, which is nice, but eventually you're pushing all the poor out. But to a more different area but I, I guess you know you're gonna have to wait and see but man I guess this is the cost of living nowadays but what can you do you know uh, but came from watching a film the film was good uh, Kingsman the new one was a good film um, wait for my reviews obviously if you do listen to my podcast the Clairpoint podcast, which is obviously available on soundcloud.com uh, slash randy dash freddy dash prizzle. Um, and yeah, you would see all that glorious stuff there. But listen, that sees it was, you know, it, it looks nicer than it did, let's say, about five, seven, eight years ago. They've renovated everything, you know, everything looks nice now. Just a completely different Battersea from the station side to the back end of Battersea. Now, if you're going towards your Nine Elms side, not so great. It's still a bit rough in the edges, you know what I mean? As you as you can see, but 
This is the cost of living nowadays, which is it's just annoying to some of the consumers. But you know, it's just what it is. London is getting more and more expensive here in London and the prices of everything is rising, bills and this, and then you had Brexit on top of that. It's just a oh, nightmare for people, man. But unfortunately, this is the route that it is, and this is the way it is. Even if the whole Boris situation that went down, if people saw he obviously broke the rules and was doing all these dancing and stuff like that, we can't depend on him nowadays, and I do think he should resign, because to be honest, what he did was a complete madness. You know, you had obviously some of these peoples that got caught breaking the rules and that, they had to resign and stuff, so he should resign too. That's just my opinions on that. Yeah, he's a bit of a twat. He got caught with his pants down, but he didn't actually get caught with his pants down. He got caught winding upon a girl, which looked completely wrong. You saw the way he was dancing. It's one of those things that you just think creams, man. If I was Boris and I was dancing like that, I would not want to see that ever again. Because that right there is a testament that old dads like that should not be dancing like that but anyway that's me done for a little monologue hopefully i'll see you guys in another time uh until next time randy out